back, relax and maybe get yourself a snack Me and you gonna have a little chat about books Hey guys, so as you probably noticed over the last week I finally caught up on videos and I've been very behind, which means I have a massive amount of books that I have not shown you guys yet. So instead of kind of dividing it up into loads of smaller book hauls month by month, I thought I'll just wait until I'm caught up on other things and then I'll do a massive book haul. So today is the first part of that massive book haul, which I have no doubt will need to be divided into smaller parts. But this includes um, some stuff that I got for my birthday and some stuff that we got when we were in Dublin for Worldcon and also just loads of books that kind of have been delivered to my house over the last few months that I haven't been able to haul for you guys because either I've been super busy or I just haven't really sat down to film very much. Um, finally got my lights set up on my bookcase behind me and like things a little bit more in order so hopefully I'll be a lot more regular with filming and I just wanted to sit down and tell you what books you might see coming up on the channel. I've been reading a lot of SBFBO books at the moment so you'll probably see a lot of those coming up in reviews very soon and then after that I intend to review some of my favourite books that I've read over the couple of months that I haven't really been doing book reviews. Um, I want to tell you guys a little bit about some of my favourites and maybe some of my worst books if you're interested in that let me know and then we'll try and get back on track for the rest of the year. So let's just dive straight in. There's not really much of an order to this, so we'll just get started. So the first few books I wanted to show you are a series, and they're all three in the same series by Sophia McDougall. Um, this was sent to me by Galantz, and it sounds like a pretty interesting series. It starts with the Romanitas, then it has Rome Burning, and then Savage City. So the Romanitas is all about the Roman Empire nowadays. A slave waits to be crucified, a desperate young girl with strange abilities stalks the streets of London, and a gang of fugitives hides out in the Pyrenees. Whilst on giant screens in every city, the world watches the funeral of the imperial family's most glamorous couple. Magnetic railways span the globe and slaves are constructing a giant bridge over the Persian Gulf. A single state holds absolute sway, but as tensions with a rival empire escalate, the first rumblings of a world conflict are beginning to be felt. This is the Roman Empire now. So I love ancient Greece and ancient Rome and I love learning about kind of the empires and the colonies and the civilizations that they had back in that time. Um, so the idea of a kind of combined nowadays and ancient Rome sensibilities, I suppose, is definitely something that appeals to me. Um, I never heard of this author before, despite the fact that there are three in the series. Um, I don't know how I'd never heard of it, because it definitely sounds right up my street, but it's a very beautiful series and I'm looking forward to kind of diving in and hoping I'll really enjoy this series as I get to it. So that's the first set of books I was sent very happy to have these and do let me know if you've heard or read any of these books um, because I've definitely not even heard of these before. I received them let alone read them so I'd love to have your thoughts if you have. Next up I got this a little while ago which I've been meaning to read recently because I really love Becky Chambers. This is her newest book which is called To Be Taught If Fortunate and it's a tiny little novella but I believe it's her kind of going in a new direction away from some of her old Wayfarer books and into a slightly different setup of sci-fi so I'm definitely intrigued about this. I've heard mixed things from some of my friends, some really seem to love it, others seem to think the ending is a little bit of a cop-out so I'm intrigued because I've not read it yet um, but I definitely want to sit down and get to this very soon. As I say it's super duper short um, so it shouldn't take me very long, it's only about 130 pages so I just need to find the time to do this. I don't really want to know any more than what it says on the cover so yeah, I'm just going to dive in kind of fairly blind because Becky Chambers is great, so I'm sure this will be fab. Next up, I have another two books in a series, which are these two. I have The Smoke Thieves and The Demon World, both by Sally Green. These were sent to me by Penguin. As you can see, one of them has amazing, beautiful pink, sort of lurid um, sprayed edges, which is beautiful. So I'm really excited to have these. And I do think the cover of this one, and in fact, the cover of this one are both very beautiful. This, I believe, is a YA series. And it's about a princess who prepares to marry a man she's never met, whilst her true love is facing the executioner's block. 
Um, there's also a downtrodden servant seeking revenge, a man at the crossroads where family and fortune lie one way and utter destruction lies the other, and a girl called Tash who is facing her demons literally. So it sounds like it's multi-POV, YA series, definitely one that I'm intrigued to get to, and I've heard that you can kind of binge read these two back to back quite easily, so happy to have both of them. Next up I have The Undoing of Arlo Knot. I believe this is kind of a contemporary but with a fantastical twist in that if your life had an undo button what would you do with it? That's kind of the concept of Arlo Knot's life where he does have a kind of undo action. Um, but second chances aren't all they're cracked up to be. As wonderful as his new life is, an accident in his childhood still haunts him and the temptation to undo, undo and keep undoing could be too much to resist. So where do you draw the line if you have something as miraculous as a magical do-over button? Very intrigued about this. Um, I think it's a really interesting concept so I just want to see whether it's been done well but looking forward to trying this out and it's by Heather Child. Next up, moving on to some of the things I got whilst I was at Worldcon. One of the things that was given out for free was this little anthology, which includes tales by eight Japanese authors. They are all science fiction and they're all based around um, AI, essentially. These are the various authors, as you can see, and I don't really know anything about the stories. I think they are couple of pages each. It's very, very short. Um, but I know that a lot of the people who did go to Worldcon picked this one up and it sounds like it's going to be great. I love experiencing sci-fi and fantasy that is not from a Western setting because it kind of offers a very unique perspective on the ideas and the kind of themes that are being explored. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this one. Another freebie that I got whilst in Worldcon is this one, which is Titan Tasters 2019 to 2020. It is just a taster book. Ooh, blimey, that scared the life out of me. So some cards fell out. I picked these up whilst I was at the Titan party, actually. They're very beautiful. And I thought I could use them as bookmarks. So I think I will do exactly that. But I'd forgotten I put them in there. So that scared the life out of me. Anyway, this is, as I say, a tasters, um, so you can see there's quite a few different books in there, uh, but I guess you get the first 30 pages or so of each one to see if you like it and whether you want to request it or anything like that. Very intrigued to try this one out, um, see if there's anything in there that kind of tempts me to buy anything else, but don't really know much more than that. Oh, actually, on the back you can see all the books that are included, I think, so... That's cool. It's a kind of interesting collection of people, actually. I want to read some of Gareth L. Powell's, so it'd be good to try his stuff. And I don't think I really know any of the others. Charlie Jane Anders I've read before. But yeah, I don't know most of the others, so it'd be interesting to try some of the new voices. Another one that I got whilst in Worldcon is this. It comes out, actually, it came out a couple weeks ago, um, and this is The Resurrectionist of Kel... Caligo, Caligo by Wendy Trimbody and Alicia Zaloga. This was actually really cool because when I went to the stand where they were giving these out, the authors were actually there. So they signed it to me, which is really nice. Um, hopefully I will like it. It sounds pretty cool. It says, man of science, Roger Weatherby, scrapes out a risky living digging up corpses for medical schools. When he's framed for the murder of one of his cadavers, he's forced to trust in the superstitions he's always rejected. Blood magic. Sounds pretty good to me. Now onto some of the books I picked up whilst I was doing a kind of bookshop crawl around Dublin. I did get a fair few from secondhand places or reduced places because the price of books in Dublin compared to in the UK was actually higher because of the conversion rate at the time. So I can get pretty much the same books as I could in Dublin over in the UK. So I didn't buy that many unless they were either reduced or secondhand. But one of the ones I did get was this one, uh, Earth to Hell by Kylie Chan. This one is book number one in the Journey to Wudang series. As you can see, it was two euros. So it's fairly cheap. Um, I think it's set after the other series which is written by this author but I don't know if you have to have read the other series to enjoy this or whether you can jump in here and then go back. I'm hoping it's the latter because I've bought it now um, but it says it's been eight years since Zhang Wu, god of the northern heavens living in Hong Kong as a wealthy businessman, John Chen was exiled from the mortal realm. Emma and Simone, John's daughter, are facing a new series of threats while their best fighter Leo sits in hell. They must persuade him to come home but in hell nothing is as it appears. I think it's got demons, I think it's definitely inspired by sort of Asian martial arts. 
intrigued to see what it's all about. It's a chunky read so yeah let me know if you have actually read any books by this author. I've definitely seen their books around but have not read any and would be very interested to hear your thoughts if you have. Next up another book which is quite a chunky one actually, chunkier than I remembered when I bought it, is Bricks and Mortar by Clemens Mayer. This is a I would say contemporary but it's not, it's kind of a literary story um, based around a guy who is I believe a pimp of sorts, he kind of works in the sex trade of some kind and honestly I don't know much more about it than that but I've heard good things since picking it up on Goodreads, um, seems like a lot of people like it. I don't tend to read literary fiction but I stood in the shop and I read the first couple of pages and the way the writing was kind of formatted just pulled me in. I don't usually like literary fiction, I have to be very much in a certain frame of mind to read literary fiction but I guess I was in that frame of mind when I picked this one up and I'm super looking forward to sitting down one day and reading this. I'm not going to say it'll be anytime soon because as I say I have to really be in the mood to want to pick up a literary but I like to have a few on my shelves just for the occasion that I do feel in that mood. Next up I got this book called Blood Ties, book one of the castings trilogy by Pamela Freeman. Never heard of this author or this book but it sounded interesting. Set in a world where ghosts walk among the living comes one of the most original, enchanting and beautifully written fantasy epics of recent years. A thousand years ago, the Eleven Domains were invaded and the original inhabitants forced on the road as travellers belonging nowhere and welcomed by no one. Now the Domains are governed by an iron fish. An iron fish? That would be interesting. <laughs> governed by an iron fish. Now the Eleven Domains are governed with an iron fist by warlords. But there are wilder elements to the landscape that cannot be controlled, that may prove their undoing. Some are spirits of place, of water, of air and fire and earth. Some are greater than these, and some are human. Bramble, a village girl who no one can tame, forced to flee her home for a crime she did not commit. Ash, an apprentice to a safeguarder, forced to kill for an employer he cannot escape. And Saker, an enchanter who will not rest until the land is returned to his people. Their three stories unfold along with the stories of those lives they touch and it becomes clear they're bound together in ways not even a stonecaster could foresee, bound by their past, future and their present. So yeah, never heard of this. I was trying consciously to pick up more kind of female writers. Um, hopefully I will like this book, we'll see. Let me know if you've heard of her or any of her books. Now on to a couple of books that I actually bought at full price because I thought well I'm in a different country it's not often I go abroad let's at least buy one or two that maybe I could get in the UK for a cheaper price but I'll remember having got them in Dublin. So one of those was Waste Tide by Chen Kuifan. This sounds like it's definitely based on climate change. It's all about a kind of environmental tip or wasteland where a young girl called Mimi lives. She's drowning in the world's trash. She's a waste girl, a scavenger, picking through towering heaps of hazardous electronic detritus. Along with thousands of other migrant workers, she was lured to the Silicon Isle off the southern coast of China by the promise of steady work and a better life. But the Silicon Isle is where the rotten fruits of capitalism and consumer culture come to their toxic end. The land is hopelessly polluted and the workers are utterly at the mercy of those in power. And now a storm is gathering. Ruthless local gangs skirmish for control, eco-terrorists conspire, investors hunger for profit, and a Chinese-American interpreter searches for his roots. As the forces collide and conflict erupts, a war between rich and poor, a battle between past and future, Mimi must decide if she will remain a pawn or change the rules of the game altogether. Now, I picked this one up because I heard good things about it from Ken Liu, who's actually the translator of this, but also there's a couple of different authors who are kind of quoted on here that sound really interesting. Um, David Mitchell and Sixin Liu and Charlie Jane Anders, Lavi Tidha and Adrian Tchaikovsky, all of whom I've read books by actually. Yeah, pretty much all of them I've read books by and I've enjoyed most of their books and I respect them as authors so I'm definitely keen to kind of find out more about this and climate change and eco techno thrillers as this has been described are definitely on the up in terms of there's a lot more of them coming out 
So I want to see what I think, and I think this could be a good starting point. Another book that we did by full price in Dublin was Space Opera. This is by Catherine M. Valenti, and I've wanted this for a while, ever since I heard about it, and it was pitched kind of as Eurovision in space. That sounds good to me. So I definitely was pleased to find this in one of the bookshops over there, bought it, decided that's all I needed to know. I've read other work by Catherine M. Valenti. She's a bit mixed for me. I don't always love her stuff, but I've heard good things about this and just the tagline has intrigued me enough to pick it up. So bought this one as well in Dublin. I think I'm going to have to call it there for now, but I will be doing another part because I have a pile that is about twice as big as the one I've just got through showing you those books to go through. So it might be another part or two. Um, I'd love to see you guys there. I will try my best to edit it as quickly as possible and get it up very soon after this. So look out for it. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave me all your comments on those I've just told you about below and I'll see you very soon. Bye guys. Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.